Are you confused or even annoyed with this whole toxic masculinity culture? It's become a hit phrase that just lumps all men into one category. Based on, I mean, the very worst of us, really. I mean, if you look at what they're trying to call toxic masculinity, they base it on the very worst of men. Guys, it's a joke. It's not real. You know, it's, it's an exaggeration like most things in this world. And in this video, I'm going to share with you what men are and what they're not. Now, I've thought long and hard about this, guys, so this is a deeper video than some of my other ones. By the way, my name is Brent. I am the Fallible Man, and I make content to help men become the men they want to be. I make content for men, husband, and fathers. Everything in that facet of life, guys. I'm making videos for you. And I don't have all the answers necessarily, but this is something I take pretty seriously. So I got some good ideas, and I'd love for you to join me on this journey as we all try to be better men. Now, we're going to examine what makes men masculine. I'm not talking about physical masculinity, guys. For some reason, that becomes a really focused on topic, right? We get wrapped up in physically, physically masculine arguments. You know, our guys who aren't as big and muscular, less of men because they're not big and muscular. But, you know, we're not talking about physical characteristics, okay? I'm not going to argue that. I think it's a really stupid argument, to be honest. But we're going to talk about what makes men masculine and really a lot of the things that people tend to think are toxic masculinity are just a lack of maturity. They're just guys still growing into men. That's all. This is the Fallible Man Podcast. Your home for everything man, husband, and father. Here is your host, the Fallible Man, Brent Dowlin. Welcome back, guys. Hey, over the last few decades, and I honestly think, based on my research, there's actually been a longer a longer trip than that. But I don't want to over-exaggerate things just because I'm 40, and while I've looked up a lot of history and I've spent a lot of time studying this stuff, guys, I can really speak more clearly about my lifetime and even a little bit before that. So we're going to say just over the last few decades, the world has really decided to take a negative turn on the idea of masculinity, and it's beyond me. But it's it's kind of ridiculous, the, the stance everybody is taking on this, or that you're seeing perpetuated in stereotypes, right? I hate the term toxic masculinity. Masculinity is not toxic masculinity is actually very important the world as we know it does not exist without masculinity masculinity drives men to be the very best they can it drives men to build and create and make the world around us a better place that's that's how we got to where we are at this point in history guys masculinity is important and pointing out one group of people based on the worst examples, right? There are men who sexually assault women. I have very strong opinions about what needs to be done to those men. It's never okay. It's not all right. And men know that. Animals act that way. Animals take what they want. We have evolved and our masculinity has evolved with it, guys. We don't club people over the head and take them back to our caves. That's not the way it works anymore. But there are monsters, and I will call them monsters, who prey on women and children and old people. Those are not men. Do not be mistaken. And lumping all of us in with those people is honestly just sick and wrong, guys. It's wrong. Men have been judged on the most absurd, extreme examples, right? Think about how absurd it would be to punish an entire fourth grade class because 
little Billy decided to act out. Right? We don't do that with little kids. No, in the military, that's different. We do that for sure. But we don't do that to children or people we're trying to teach or encourage. We don't penalize 30 kids because one kid acted out. We don't penalize all the boys in the class because Billy acted out. That's not healthy. And so while you say, yeah, that's kind of a little extreme. No, no, that's exactly where we're at, guys. The kind of group judgment has moved to bigger and more ridiculous levels in the last couple of years, even so than the last couple of decades. It's actually just mind boggling, right? We've gotten to the point where it, it, it feels like this, right? I had a bad experience with a Chevy Cavalier. So therefore all cars are bad is the level of judgment we're leveling and it's absurd you say uh come on you're no I'm, I'm not exaggerating it that is the point we are moving to people are judging entire groups based on a bad experience right you have one bad car so therefore all cars are bad no that's not how it works right you have one per bad person that doesn't make all people bad you have one male who acts outside of what is acceptable that doesn't make men bad if you saw the Gillette commercial this year that everybody are it was in the last year that everybody was talking about my goodness what kind of absurdity have we moved towards and I'm sorry Gillette you sold us out guy you, I will never do business with Gillette again I didn't really do, I hadn't done business with them in years, but I will never do business with that company again because they have sold out men who are the biggest demographic. But if you think I'm exaggerating, all you have to look at the last year of the election, right? People are judging entire groups based on a handful of people, right? We're all familiar with them storming the Capitol building, right? That was wrong. We should not attack our own buildings. That's wrong. Just like the attacking federal buildings during riots that are not peaceful is still wrong. Okay? It's, it's really no difference. And I'm not sure how people are drawing that difference. But and I, I don't like to get political, so I'm not going to talk a lot of politics, guys. But saying all Republicans, all Democrats, all liberals, all conservatives, all leftists, all right-wing people, all lib libertarians, etc. are bad based on where I stand politically as a person is absurd. I have friends who are liberals. We have some interesting, interesting discussions and disagreements, but you know what? Some of them I work with and we have civil conversations and we don't agree on everything that's okay but they're not bad people they just have some ideas i disagree with and vice versa right you're not going to agree with everything i say i'm not going to agree with everything you say but that is where we've gotten to is instead of talking let's just judge people based on our current experience and it's stupid and it's wrong we've done it to men for several years now, if you see me looking down in the video at my notes, I took a lot of notes for this. So I'll try and not go real long on this, guys. But uh, no promises. This one took a lot of thought. Number one, men are a bit stoic. Now, I'm not going to say totally stoism, which is a religion. Well, it's a philosophical belief. It's not so much a religion. But I'm not saying men have to be into stoicism. There are some valid parts of it that we need to reflect and the way it's commonly referred to in modern times, men are a bit stoic. Boys are not. Okay. Remember earlier I said it's more of a question of immaturity than it is of good versus bad. There are a lot of men who do things because they are immature, not because they are necessarily bad. They have not matured from boys to men. I don't care how old they are. They just have not moved to that level of maturity. 
The most simple beliefs of Stoicism is the concept of self-control and fortitude in dealing with emotions. Specifically, negative emotions, but true Stoicism tends to actually cover the entire spectrum, not just the bad ones. Now, what that really translates to is men are not as emotionally reactive to things as boys are, or as even women are. And that's not a problem, ladies. That's just a difference between the men and the women of the species. You'll find in every species in the world, there are major differences between the males and the females of the species. Guys, I hope you grabbed a drink. Um, hitting my black rifle in a can today instead of my cup because I forgot to make coffee before I shot the show. Men, real men, learn to master their emotions. And it is a lifelong journey. There's nothing wrong with having emotions. We absolutely have emotions. However, we are able to detach enough and keep them in check to not react emotionally to everything. We think about it, we process it, we deal with it, we learn from it, we take it all in as information, and then we choose what we do with it. That is what men do. That is the simplest form of stoicism in men. Men are not just emotionally reactive. We actually think through the process because we take it in as information, not as panic or just free radical whew, take in. Boys are still emotional. Boys have not reached that level of emotional maturity or maturity period where they have learned to master their emotions. And so they react and sometimes they react badly. They react strongly. They may act out. They may get a little wild. They may get a little physical because they have not learned how to take in that whatever occurred and settle and control the emotion, process what needs to happen and go from there. Okay. That is the, one of the biggest difference men have learned to control their emotions and not just freak out. Now, ladies, please understand. I, I see all these comments about how toxic masculinity doesn't allow for men to have emotions and experience emotion. And that's all crap. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. To actually believe that a human being doesn't have some kind of emotion. They have a thing for that. That is called being sociopath. And it's actually a mental illness. The majority of people in the world have emotions. And we do have emotions. Whether we display them to the level you think we should. It's a whole other conversation. We don't. We control them. We process them. We take them in this information, and then we decide where we're going from there. Don't mistake control for lack of emotion or toxic masculinity saying it's not okay to have emotions. We have them. We experience them differently. If we experience them the same way that you did, we would be women. We wouldn't be men. Read a book. There's lots of them. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. And the list goes on and on and on. We are inherently a little bit different from each other. Otherwise, we wouldn't like each other. Hey, what an idea. So when I was younger, I had anger issues. I had definitely had a temper. I had a lot of built up frustration. One of the greatest things my dad ever did for me is he let me go chop wood. We had a woodshed on the side of the house. Not all the wood needed split, but it didn't matter to me. I went and chopped wood. And... That was one of the best things he ever gave me because it let me deal with my anger emotions in a positive way. I didn't destroy anything. I didn't hurt anything. I didn't lash out at anybody. Even if I had a bad day, I came home and I split wood 
It built me up physically. It helped me learn to channel negative energy or negative emotions. It made me physically stronger. And guys, men tend to get in touch with their masculinity doing solo projects like that. If you've never split wood, go spend a couple spl hours splitting wood. You'll be tired. You'll be sore. You will swear a lot and you will sleep like a dream that night because it will be the most manly thing you've done all day because that is when men get in touch with their masculinity is in things like that where they're processing stuff by themselves in a masculine way. Chopping wood is great for you and it's great exercise. It's helpful too. Number two, men are secure in themselves. Boys are not. The easiest example of this is a lion doesn't have to walk around the savannah telling everybody he's a lion. Trust me, everybody on the plains, all the zebras, all the antelopes, giraffes, they got no question. They know it is a lion. And nobody has to say anything. It's just who they are. Men are secure in themselves. I've had the great privilege over the years of knowing quite a few soldiers and quite a few people in what's called special forces or special operations, whatever you want to call it, depending on your branch. I've known a great deal of operators over the years, and I feel very privileged because they're a very unique group of people, uh, and they do a lot for our country, so I'm very grateful for them. If you watch the channel, you know I very much support veterans' charities and rights and support because we need to take better care of our soldiers when they're coming home. They've done so much for us. But knowing some of these guys, truly, I've been in rooms with them where there was no doubt in my mind, these are the most dangerous men in this room. And even if things got out of hand or somebody started talking smack or whatever, these guys were just calm and polite. And if we needed to leave, we left. But they didn't need to go smash someone's head in because some guy was a jerk. They control their emotions because they know who they are. They know what they're capable of. They know they are strong and confident and able. And men know that. When you become a mature man, you're not having to feel like you have to try and prove yourself physically or emotionally. You don't have to assert dominance all the time. If you are a secure man, then it's there. You don't have to flash it around. It's not something to show off. I'm never intimidated. I've been in the room with some of the most dangerous people in the world, and I've never been intimidated by them. I knew fair, full well that they could break me like a twig, guys. And I'm a big guy. I had no doubt that had they wanted to, they could have physically dominated me with no problem. But I still felt very secure in myself. Boys do not. Boys are still trying to prove dominance. Boys are still trying to find their place in the world. It's a matter of maturity. So next time you see two boys roughhousing, they're just learning where they fit. They're also building confidence. Even the boy who isn't faring as well in the confrontation is actually growing through that interaction, guys. They are learning their weak points and their strong points, and they are learning what they need to work on, what they need to adjust in themselves so they don't feel negatively. Now, I'm sure someone's going to say that we'll go back to the Gillette ad. Boys will be boys with the two boys roughhousing. Shut up. It's stupid, guys. I roughhouse all the time. My brothers and I would roughhouse. My sister and I would roughhouse. My friends and I would roughhouse. We roughhouse and roughhouse and roughhouse, and it was great for us. We're boys. We need that. Girls may not need that the same way we do, but we are boys, and we do. That's just part of who we are. Guys, if you're getting something out of this, 
Be sure and hit the like button, the thumbs up if you're on YouTube. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, our Podchaser, or anywhere that actually lets you leave it. Really leave a review. It really helps my channel out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and roll to today's sponsor because I'm rolling through this pretty quick, and I'll be right back with you guys, and we'll keep going. Today's episode brought to you by thefallibleman.com. That's right, it's us. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com and check out our blog, updated twice a week with new content, and links to all of our social media offerings. Tag or search us at The Fallible Man or at Fallible Man on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and other social medias for daily content. While you're there, check out our attitude swag, shirts, cups, stickers, and more. Again, that's www.thefallibleman.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. And we're going to keep on rolling through this. Number three, men embrace honor, integrity, and humility. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I did an entire episode on these three tra uh, virtues. So I'm going to link that up here. You need to go back to that episode from season one. It's called The Everyday King. I'll list it if you're watching the video. If you're listening to this on the podcast, go back to season one, guys. Check out The Everyday uh, King podcast. It was a great show. I was so inspired by it. I have a shirt design. That, uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, my red shirt I'm wearing. It's the Everyday King shirt. It's available on Amazon as well as my website. But uh, boys are still learning these virtues. And so... It's something that needs to be fostered and nurtured in men and young boys as they're coming up. But they are virtues that every man has and is capable of. And men shine when they nurture these virtues. So go back, check out that episode. We're going to keep going. Men, number four, stay grounded. Boys are blown around by the winds of life. The very first podcast episode I did was called Stand on a Rock. Men develop a foundational belief system that hold them secure in the crazy, crazy, ever-changing world we live in. For some, it's something like God, family, country. That's a big one for me. I was raised with that. And for others, it becomes a more deeply defined code. These core beliefs anchor us. They're who we are. They shape us. They shape every decision we make. For some people, it takes years to build up these core foundational beliefs because they didn't have the positive influence to help them as they were developing when they were younger. And so something developed later in life. For some, it is something that is taught from day one in their life. I have taught my daughters and I will continue to teach my children these things. My core beliefs keep me solid no matter what. Even in this crazy pandemic, guys, I have never wavered. It's For me, it's God, family, country. And that has held me secure no matter how crazy this last year got. Boys tend to just change direction wherever the wind blows. In fact, they change direction more often than they are. They change their direction and stances more often than they change their underwear, which is nasty. But they haven't found their way yet. And it's something that they can be nurtured and taught with if they have good role models and good family helping them. So be that role model. Whether you have children or not, you can be an amazing role model. There are boys out there who just need positive male influences in their life. And you can be that whether you have your own children or you not. Help them develop those core foundational beliefs that will keep them solid for the rest of their life. Because men find those, and they find them, and it is solid footing in a crazy world. Also, hey, go back to our very first episode, Season 1, Episode 1. Stand on a rock if you didn't catch that podcast. It was my very first one, and hey, we go even deeper, deeper on this topic in that episode. And guys, be sure and leave us a comment uh, on whatever platform you're on. I check all the comments per perfect. I check all the comments personally and generally respond to them uh, if it's a question or a thought. I'd love to hear from you guys. I appreciate you guys listening to me. Number five, men adapt. 
one of the greatest capabilities that separates us from most of nature is mankind can adapt faster and more efficiently than other any other animal in the world. Now you look around and you see examples in the animal kingdom that animals have adapted to their to their world, to their uh, ecosystem over time. You can see that with different types of the same species of animals, right? There's a kind of iguana that lives on the Galapagos Islands that doesn't live anywhere else in the world because they adapted to the lifestyle there. They survived long enough to adapt to the life there. Um, but mankind's greatest strength is our ability to be adapted to life and situations. Likewise, men adapt. We look at a situation and go in with a plan or an idea. And when something goes south, instead of freaking out and panicking, go back to point number one. We look at the situation, we process the new information, and we adapt to the scenario and move forward. We don't let the emotions send us over the edge, like I said, point one. We process the information, and instead of freaking out, and instead of having a bad reaction or letting it ruin everything, we adapt the plan and keep moving forward. Boys tend to panic when something goes sideways on a uh, plan that they had. If they had already outlined something or decided how they were going to do something, if things go sideways, they tend to freak out. It's a case of immaturity. Guys, it is so important, and boys learn pretty quickly how to adapt to this one and how to become more adaptive. It's something you come face to face with time and time again. Use your stoicism, be calm, adjust, grow, learn, and move forward. Guys, a lot of the negative traits that you hear people talk about with this toxic masculinity are just the exaggeration, exaggerated tropes you see, right? We're, they're talking about masculinity in the movies, and I've done an episode about that. They're talking about these overblown, not realistic things. They're not talking about actual masculinity. Masculinity changes the world for the better. Men change the world for the better. Animals live outside societal norms. Not, let me, let me correct that. Animals live outside what is acceptable to humankind or mankind in general, right? We don't club a woman and drag her off to our abode to have her be our mate for life. That's not how it works, okay? Animals choose to live outside of basic humankind. Um, and I'm, I'm digging for the right word, but I'm missing it. It's okay to live a little differently than the rest of the world. It's not okay to do things you know are inherently wrong. Men embrace the world with certain sets of characteristics, and those are men. Those are things we need to strive to be, and it is a lifelong journey. But please don't let society try and tell you or actually convince you that matters of maturity are sins of masculinity. Guys, thanks for sticking with me. I know this is kind of a drag show. Be better tomorrow because of what you do today, guys. Your masculinity matters in the world. Be the men you're meant to be. And I'll see you next time. This has been the Fallible Man Podcast. Your home for everything man, husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.